this person here represents the average worker. And the number right here represents how many total average American or Canadian workers it would take to equal the salary of just one CEO and their salary. To put into context, the median salary for a CEO is 20 million a year, 254 times more than the average worker. If you made 50,000 per year, you would need to work 400 years to make what they make in just one year. Green, for lack of a better word, is good. The American and Canadian middle class is in trouble and no longer among the world's wealthiest people. Everyone is familiar with videos and articles announcing why people are broke every month. They're broke because they're going out too much to restaurants, they're buying bigger extravagant homes that they just don't need, or fancy cars that they just can't afford and can't afford the financing. Maybe. My mom to understand that I can't live off of a thousand dollars a month and I grew up on a certain lifestyle, she can't just take that away from me immediately. But I think there could be more to this issue than that. I believe not everything is being discussed and some things are just being conveniently left out. Doesn't there seem to be just more to it than that? People know when they're hearing the truth. It just rings clear. It makes sense, it's logical, and can be backed up by facts. Something just feels off. Now this is a very complex problem and I don't want to overgeneralize or simplify the reasons but it goes a lot deeper than people just buying unnecessary items. Is it a coincidence that the biggest trends and topics over the last few years have been how to make passive income? Making money online? Is it a coincidence that now you see a dollar store in every corner? There didn't used to be one 20-30 years ago. Why? What has changed? Years ago, there were stories about the middle class disappearing and the gap between the middle class and the rich increasing. However, the middle class is not disappearing, but being financially squeezed every month, tighter and tighter. It's like when you go to your work, more is expected of you. If you meet that level, guess what? Next month, you get more piled on you. And then next year, more piled on you. It always keeps escalating. Same thing, if you learn to budget and do this, it seems like it appears that always something else is getting added on top of that. There's some other little hurdle for the middle class to have to jump. Hoo -ah. One thing I won't do is pretend I'm some world-renowned economist and I have all the answers. I don't. I'm an accountant and analyst. However, I do feel that there are a lot of reasons why the middle class is always struggling to make payments or always broke despite working very hard but these reasons are either swept under the rug or being conveniently left out and not addressed. For those of you who are new here, welcome. I'm Aaron, a 20 year corporate accountant and analyst. I make weekly videos about investing and personal finance. I'm 33 and growing up, it was drilled into our heads. You gotta go to college if you want a middle-class job. And we even tell kids today, look, if you don't go to college, you might as well get a face tattoo. 50 years ago, a person that graduated from college could afford to buy a house, raise a few kids, and live comfortably. Today, while the college salary has increased for graduates and the average family, expenses have increased even more. If we add student loan payments on top of this, and now the American dream is now slipping out of reach. But it's true, two thirds of all jobs in America require at least some college. This is the standard now. And that wasn't the case when most members of this committee were in school. And you paid far less for your degrees. That's not speculation. We looked up where the 60 members of this committee went to college and what your school's tuition was at that time. Even adjusting for inflation, college co cost way less across the board. Many people in the present middle class appear to be facing challenges that didn't seem prevalent 50 or 60 years ago. 70 years ago, one person working could support a family, and 40 or 50 years ago, having both parents working was more than enough to make ends meet and have a comfortable living. So what has changed? What has changed from 40, 50 years ago? Is it that people are horrible with their money, just can't budget, and are giving in to impulse just way too much, despite totally fair compensation every year? 
However, something told me just look deeper into this issue. There's more to it than that and certain things I just feel are being left out and not addressed. Many people that I talk to about this issue all have similar sounding stories. They all know about the importance of finance and investing and not racking up debt and managing your money and budgeting, but they can't seem to get ahead. A lot of their net income goes towards paying essential bills and expenses every month and whatever's left over, they can invest. A few days ago, I was presented with a report I'd asked for, a comprehensive audit, if you will, of our economic condition. You won't like it. I didn't like it. However, they don't have any extra money at the end of every month. 90 to 110% of their net income goes towards paying those essential bills they claim and they don't have anything else remaining. It seems like all the other costs are increasing and their wage and compensation is either staying stagnant or actually decreasing. I hear the same story all the time. I don't have any extra money. I'm not going out to fancy restaurants and buying fancy cars and I'm not shopping at Gucci and buying $5,000 purses. I'm just struggling to pay my bills. Consider hitting the like button as it really helps out my channel with the YouTube algorithm and helps this video get found. Years ago, there were stories about the middle class disappearing and the gap widening between the rich and everyone else. Now, stories, articles, videos, and facts are being released about how the middle class is not disappearing but being financially squeezed every year. To quote Jennifer Erickson in her great article, the reality is that the middle class is being squeezed. As this report will show, for a married couple with two children, the cost of key elements of middle class security, childcare, higher education, healthcare, housing, and retirement rose by more than $10,000 in the 12 years from 2000 to 2012, at a time when this family's income was stagnant. The rich get richer. Everybody's heard that saying and are familiar with it, I'm sure. This chart lists what are known as key items. Tuition has experienced the highest increase, followed by medical, rent, CPI inflation or consumer price index, and then salary compensation and hourly earnings. We have tried to fix this problem for generations now. New rounds of policymakers come in and tweak the system in different ways. Today, St. Francis cost over 25 grand. On average, this entire committee graduated from college 33 years ago and paid an inflation-adjusted tuition of $11,690 a year. Today, the average tuition at all of your same schools is almost $25,000. That's a 110% increase over a period of time when wages have gone up only 16%. So people aren't making more money and college is objectively way more expensive. You gotta go to college. It is drilled into people every day that if you want to succeed, you got to go to college or university. Canadians and Americans now owe more money in student loans than they owe in car loans or towards credit cards. The amount of student loan debt has tripled in the last 15 years. Colleges and universities in the past were seen as a golden ticket to get ahead in life. As soon as a lot of students get out of college, they have these visions and aspirations like, yes, I've hit the big time. Here we go. Bring me the money. Then unfortunately, reality sets in. But what has been neglected and swept under the rug is the high cost of these secondary education schools and many former students are still found to be repaying the student loan debts decades after having graduated. Those colleges and universities aren't really held accountable if those students graduate and are able to find work in that profession. Governments at one time gave out roughly an equal amount of student loans and grants. However, all that's changed. Students can easily end up paying more than their original loan amount due to interest being added on top of interest outstanding. And if you're thinking people with a degree make more money, you're right. However, it takes years to earn that higher salary and they don't make that as soon as they graduate. And statistics show that the students that didn't graduate and only attended one year have the hardest time repaying that loan. Why? Students who attended college or university and ended up dropping out within a year are usually the ones most likely to default on a loan. The most likely reason is that they have trouble repaying this loan because they had to take a job in an unrelated field. 
And yet many borrowers are still treated like deadbeats because the government has put their financial futures in the hands of predatory for-profit loan servicing companies, of misleading borrowers and pushing them into repayment plans that in some cases have cost individual borrowers tens of thousands of dollars in unnecessary interest.